Hi, I'm Judy Morano. Welcome to the show. Today we're joined by Chris Smith, who is the artistic director of the Donesburg Symphony... Donesburg Chamber Ensemble. I can't get it right. That's Donesburg okay. Donesburg Chamber Ensemble. It's complicated. So, yeah. Yeah, welcome. Thank you for having me today on it your is, show. It is my pleasure. So, not a lot of people know about you, so why don't you tell me a little about you first, and then we'll talk about the everything else. Okay. My name is Chris Smith. I am the artistic director of the Donesburg Chamber Ensemble, as well as being the flutist. We have, the Donesburg Chamber Ensemble has been in Putnam County now for 32 years. It was started by three college students home one summer. Um, I was one of those college students along with Ken Hawes who played French horn and Bob mm -hmm. Zubrecki who plays violin. Mm -hmm. And the Putnam Arts Council at this time had just started their grant program and they asked us if we would like to start a chamber ensemble and we decided we had the base for to I'm just, start I'm it. I'm surprised because there's not a lot of call for chamber music in Brewster. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a good audience uh -huh. and you know they always come to our concerts and they mm -hmm. always enjoy our concerts. Mm -hmm. Our first concert took place at the Old Southeast Church which is, which is a historical landmark just mm -hmm. north of Brewster mm -hmm. and because that used to be the town of Donesburg itself that's how we got our name. No, I live right off of there and I did not know it had its own town. Yeah, yeah, there was a little town up there Wow. and the Old Southeast Church has, it's, has no running water, no electricity. Right. But the acoustics in there are absolutely wonderful yeah. and great for concerts. So we did our first concert there. Uh -huh. And I can remember being up in the tower with Ken Hawes saying, do you think people will come? And he said, I don't know. And we decided to ring the bell for good luck. Uh -huh. And after we rung that bell, all the cars started pulling up. Well, you didn't have Facebook. You didn't have all the places to outreach exactly. like that. We so depended upon the newspapers and the media and uh -huh. flyers. Which is the old school way of doing the old school. You couldn't way. guarantee people then. You didn't even. You had no idea who was going to show up. We had no idea. Wow. And that day we had a critic also show up. Wow. And our concert was reviewed and very favorably. Uh -huh. And that was the beginning of the Donesburg Chamber Ensemble. Now you first started. You had friends help friends join you from friends college. From college. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did you all go to the same college? We had various colleges from Juilliard to the Manhattan School to SUNY Purchase. Uh huh. But we all knew each other. Okay, it's a small community. It's of a the small musicians. community. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And where did you go to school? I went to the Juilliard School of Music oh. as well as SUNY Stony Brook. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And okay. Juilliard was a great experience. Oh, know? I bet. I Being so surrounded much there. by that much talent must yeah, be amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. A really great experience. So aside from um, the Donesburg Ensemble, right? You do other things. Yes, I'm also Few. the conductor of the Putnam Symphony Orchestra, mm -hmm. which is our community orchestra. And in our community orchestra, we have people from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. um, my youngest member is usually about eighth grade, wow. up to somebody who's over 80 years old. That's true. Some of my adults have been professionals. Some uh -huh. of my adults have left their instrument for 20 or 30 years and are now coming back to their instruments. Uh -huh. My students, I have students from all the school districts in Putnam County, in mm -hmm. Putnam Symphony, and it's great because the music students, whether they're in Brewster, Carmel, Malpac, they finally all get to meet each uh -huh. other. Uh -huh. Now, where, does, where do Symphony. they play? Where does we rehearse play? on Wednesday nights starting in September from 7 to 9 mm -hmm. in the Brewster High School Band Room, uh -huh. and they do two concerts a year. Um, our fall concert is the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and it's our oh. holiday concert. Okay. And then usually around end of April or beginning of May is uh -huh. their second concert. And where do you perform? We're, we perform right at Brewster High School. Right at Brewster High School. At their Performing okay. Arts Center. Now, how do people get involved in that? I'm, I'm so curious. Like, do you need to just you audition? Is it an audition process? There are no auditions. Okay. Which, you know, some people get very nervous, oh, yes. I don't want to audition. Right. There are no auditions. All we ask is that people let me know that they're coming uh -huh. before the first rehearsal so I can have a folder ready uh -huh. for them to uh -huh. go. And usually I just talk to them beforehand to kind of feel what level they're at. Uh -huh. And then we take it from there. Really? And, and you don't turn build. people away? We don't turn people away, no. And we don't charge anything for musicians That's to come join us. What a great us. experience for a young musician. Right, because I know when the Donesburg first started, mm -hmm. all three of us played in Putnam Symphony, and that's how we knew each how other. How long has Putnam Symphony been going on? About 35 years, Okay, approximately. And so your job as the conductor, do you plan the pieces? Do you plan the... I plan the pieces. I, pl I plan the concerts. Uh -huh. I help them with um, musicians and trying to uh -huh. recruit musicians. And how many people right now are in the symphony? 
It can vary. Right now we're about 25. We can go up to 70. And wow. it just depends upon who's available. And do you commit for a year? Like when you start in September, are you committing to be on being with the symphony for a year? No, or can they you commit just for that concert. Oh. So if you're only available in the fall, mm -hmm. you can come join us in the fall. If you're only available in the spring, you can come wow. join us in the spring. And if you want to do the whole year. And do the schools support this program? Do they send people to you? Yes, they do. They do. They do. They try to help us out. Uh -huh. It's really a unique program. That is. That really is. And getting the opportunity to play with people who are older, it's, I think that's a great learning experience. Right. Or just playing, learning to play together with other people. That's right. And it's great because my older adults will help our younger students. Right. My more advanced students will help my adults who are just returning to their instruments. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So it's a really unique learning experience, too, that's as wonderful. well as making music. And how can you find out about this? Is there a way to find out about the, let's talk about the, the Putnam Symphony. Putnam Symphony first. Okay. Putnam Symphony, you can contact us by calling 845-228-4167. Uh -huh. You can also email us at putnamsymphony at verizon.net. Okay. Okay, terrific. So that's what you do. Is that your living? This is what you do for a living, these two things? Well, I've got more. Of course you do. I also teach elementary school music. Uh-huh. And uh, where do you do that at? I do that in the Brewster Central School District, yes. and this will be my 31st year there. So, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful position. So you're at the, which I'm school? At JFK Elementary at JFK? School. And then I also am a church organist and choir director. Right now I just work as a substitute, uh -huh. which I love to do because it gets me into many, many different churches mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on a Sunday morning. I get to bounce around you a little bit. You are a busy bit. woman. Oh yeah, it never stops. <laughs> What a difference. Is there, tell me the difference between teaching little kids and then working with the symphony. It must be so... How do you change brains? I mean, that seems it's like to night me. and day. Yeah, I, mean, I love my younger students, uh -huh. and they're so energetic. And I go, 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 go all uh -huh. day, and then I get to apply more the skills I learned at Juilliard with the orchestra, uh -huh. with making music and music right. composition and how it all fits right. together. Right, because the little ones are doing. Basic. We're, we're running around. They actually start learning how to read music. Wow. We're playing a lot of drums in my music class. Uh -huh. And I think the two things they will tell you is my music class is never quiet. Never. <laughs> and we're always moving. I think that's great. Yeah. That must really use all your energy up. By the end of the day, you must be exhausted. Oh, I'm just starting. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got to go back and do all this other thing. So now, aside from these, do you play elsewhere? I mean, obviously, as yeah, a flutist, I free, do you? Yeah, I freelance as a professional flutist, uh -huh. so it's possible you can see me around the area with other groups or playing on other concert series as well. Okay, locally, pretty much? Locally. Um, I have played in Europe. I've played in China. So I've kind of been all over the, all over the world. Wow. Anything in the city? Do you play on Broadway I'm or anything? Or that's currently, not I'm thing? not playing on Broadway, uh -huh. but in the past, I've been down at Lincoln Center and Carnegie Hall. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's get back to this Donesburg. Donesburg because Chamber that's, Ensemble. I think, is the most unknown chamber ensemble. I mean, everyone, people know about the symphony, right. but I feel like Donesburg just doesn't get enough credit, doesn't right. get enough publicity. We're out there. Uh -huh. We do put our publicity out to 42 different media sites. Mm -hmm. So it is publicized. We have sandwich boards in front of the churches that we perform. And how in. often do you perform? We run basically through the summer. And okay. we can do between six to ten concerts within a season. Okay. And, and um, are they local? They're local. We usually perform our Saturday night concerts at St. Mary's in the Highlands over in Cold Spring. Okay. And then we're here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Brewster on Sunday afternoons. Okay. And all of your members are professionals, you said? All of our members are professionals. We have approximately 150 musicians on our roster. And we will go anything from a chamber orchestra, which is our largest ensemble, mm -hmm. to a jazz ensemble, to a string trio with flute, to flute, harp, and cello. Wow. So our combination, flute, piano, So people piano, can ask, cello. they can kind of fit whatever they want out of you guys. Right, right. And do you ever have the full group play? Or what's a full group? How many people is that? Well, our full group is the chamber orchestra, which is about 14 members. Okay, okay. All right, and what kind of stuff do you play? We play mostly classical music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm known to find classical music that people have not heard before. Oh, interesting. We all know about Mozart and Haydn, uh -huh. but have you ever heard of St. George? No. No. Stamets? Probably mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a knack of finding these unusual pieces. Uh -huh. 
and we have done some U.S. premieres here in Brewster as well. Okay. Um, with some of our pieces. The biggest one, I think, was a piece by Claude Bowling. Claude Bowling was very famous back in the late 70s, early 80s with his jazz suites. Okay. But he also wrote a lot of chamber music that most people don't know about. Mm -hmm. And one of his pieces is called La Princess. And I could not find this music anywhere. I searched and I searched and uh -huh. I looked and I looked. And this is going back in the day when we only had fax machines. Uh -huh. And I was sitting at home and the fax machine went off. I thought, well, that's kind of strange because I'm not expecting a fax. Uh -huh. And it was this note from Claude Bowling himself in oh France. Oh, my goodness. And through, I don't know what, how it got to him that we were looking for his music. He said, wow. my music has not been published yet. I'm sending you a copy of my manuscript. Please do the U.S. premiere of it. Oh, my goodness. So about a week later, the music arrived. Mm -hmm. And back in 1989 or 87, we performed the U.S. premiere of it. Wow. And we just got done performing it about a month ago. And again. what was the response to it? People? Oh, people loved it. And yeah. they said, oh, what beautiful music that was. Uh -huh. Similar to what? It's kind of a cross between classical and jazz. Nice, nice. And, yeah, cause and spa that, music, uh -huh. you know. Spa music. Yeah, spa music. It's, it's kind of a mixture uh -huh. there. Yeah, there's, a, there's always a risk bringing in and doing a new piece for an audience. Cause, exactly. You know, they want to hear what they know, and that's a huge risk to bring somebody in that they don't know for fear that it doesn't float the same way you want it to. Right, right. And that's yeah. why when I program a new piece, I'm very careful about the programming mm -hmm. to make sure we have some of what we call our standard repertoire right. mixed right. in, so someone goes, oh, I know that piece. Right. I know that there's piece. A, there's a comfort in that, there's like a hearing comfort. a piece that you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very... While introducing the audience to new pieces as well. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So... And um, so have you, have you introduced any other artists to this area? Any new other artists besides him? Have you played new stuff? Well, we did, last year we did a concert called White Mozart, Black Mozart. Because St. George lived at the same time period as Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart did, mm -hmm. but he was French. He gets the credit for being the first African classical composer. But most people had never heard of him. And he lived the same time as Mozart. Same well, time of course, period. he was shadowed by Mozart was Mozart, and I'm sure right. there was not a lot of But his going music on. is beautiful, and uh -huh. some of it, I think, is just as nice as Mozart. And once again, I had to go on a seek and search for this music, and somebody from put us in contact with Taffel Music. They're a chamber ensemble up in Canada. Mm -hmm. They had actually recorded some of their pieces, and I talked oh. to their artistic director directly, and she said, yes, we have the symphony you are looking for. Once again, she made copies for us and sent it down because it's not available in the general public. Yeah. So yeah. you really... So you're doing things, interesting things. You're doing yeah. things that um, we're not going to hear anywhere else. You're not going to hear anyplace else. Okay, yeah. so how do we find you? I mean, I, I know you play all over the place, so like, right. how, do I, how do I know? Where do okay. I go? What do I do? So, Don't Spread Chamber Ensemble, our phone number is 845-228-4167. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You can also email us at donesburg at verizon.net, mm -hmm. and our website is donesburg.org, and that gives you a schedule a of schedule. all our and you concerts. have a schedule that we do, do just the summer, though. No, Donesburg Great. plays... Pretty much just, just the, the summer, summer here in Putnam County. Uh -huh. And then you might find us on other concert series throughout the year. Okay, okay. And you have your schedule up already? People yes. Can follow. And are, you, yep. are you winding down now? Is this we are winding down, except that we're winding up because on Labor Day weekend, that's our big orchestral concert. Okay, and where is that? And that will be held at St. Mary's in the Highlands in oh, Cold, Cold Spring uh -huh. and Trinity Lutheran Church here in Brewster. Same program? Yep, same program. Uh -huh. We're Saturday night in Cold Spring and then Sunday afternoon with the same program in Brewster. Okay, so we don't have to travel all the way to Cold Springs if we want to hear it. Right. Or uh -huh. if you can't get to Brewster and mm -hmm. want to spend the afternoon in Cold Springs. Cold Springs, you have that option as well. And how long is the program? And The what program will lasts about two hours. And what kind of things will we And we are going to be playing hear? some Mozart symphonies, some Haydn symphonies. I'm going to be playing a flute concerto by Stamets, mm -hmm. which is a little bit later than Mozart. Okay. Um, and that's going to be our program this time around. We'll have 14 musicians. We'll have violinists, violists, cello, bass, oboe, flute, two French horns, and bassoon. And tickets are? Tickets are $9 for adults and students okay. and $10 wow. for... Ten dollars to go see a wonderful orchestra. Right. You can't and beat that. And the reason why we can do that is because this is really a community or community group mm -hmm. because we're sponsored by the New York State Council on the Arts through uh -huh. Putnam Arts Council. Okay. Our local businesses sponsor us 
and then we have private sponsorship. And with everybody working together, you can make this affordable we can for keep, anybody. Yeah, and everybody can come to our concert. I love that. And I love you know, that. sometimes over in Cold Spring, somebody will be up visiting for the day, and mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, they don't have any money left. And we have always said, just please come on just in. Just come and listen. Right. Just come Experience and listen. Experience it. Experience it. Yeah, that's wonderful. So our doors are always open to everybody. That's wonderful. And there are some, oh, there are some people who can benefit from that. And thinking about how much it would cost to go on down to the city for the day and hear music. You know, right, it's right. Really, it's I don't really think you could even ride the train for 9 or $10 I don't down think to the so. city. I don't think so. No. Mm -hmm. So do you practice? I mean, you, what's your day like? I know your day is at school. So when do you have time to practice your art and organize and <laughs> do all these things? It's a real juggling routine. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes I'm up early in the morning practicing before my kids are up getting ready for school because mm -hmm. I am a mom on top of it all and then I go and teach uh -huh. and I get done teaching and I run my kids around after school or my husband, regular mom things do the mom things mm -hmm. um, and you know of course my husband helps me out I couldn't do all this without him mm -hmm. backing me and then once the kids are in bed at nine sometimes I go back and practice again uh -huh. and then you get up and do you, do you it practice the next as day. much as say like a a professional would? Yeah, I have to. Yeah, I'm not, and that wasn't an insult. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was no, 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 I didn't no. know how to phrase that. Yeah, I have to. To stay on top of my flute game, I have to practice. Because the first day I don't practice, I know it. The second day, my mom knows it. <laughs> and then by the third day, everybody else knows it too. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, when I had interviewed Bob Zubricki, he told yeah. me the exact same quote. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said the same thing. You, you have to do it every day. Yeah, it's kind of muscle memory, remember. Yeah. 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 And, and you're just like an athlete. And that's why a lot of people don't realize mm -hmm. about musicians mm -hmm. is that we're almost like an athlete because we use so many muscles in our body. And if right. we're not working out, it's not going to work. That's amazing. Now tell me, is your flute something you've had for a long time? I've had it for a long time. Um, it's kind of a unique flute. I call it the international flute. Uh -huh. because this part was designed by a man here in Brewster. Uh -huh. His name was Julius Baker, and he was the first flautist of the New York Phil, and he lived here in Brewster, oh, mm -hmm. and he was my teacher. Okay. So he designed this part of the flute. Mm -hmm. He had the Yamaha company in Japan make it. Okay. And then the most important part of the flute is actually the head joint up here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that the sound of the flute comes out down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It actually comes out of here. So really? your head joint is the most important thing. So not knowing anything yeah. about the flute. Go ahead. When you hit the buttons, yeah. buttons is probably a bad word. Keys. Keys. Um, so you're stopping airflow? Is that what's happening? No. All I'm doing is making, think of this as a tube or a pipe. Okay. When I push all the keys down, all I'm doing is lengthening the pipe. And oh. when I lengthen the pipe, I get the lower pitches. Oh. When I start pulling the keys up, I'm shortening the pipe okay. and making higher pitches. Oh. Very little of my air will actually go through my flute. Oh, how interesting. And so you're not out of air when you play. You're, you're well, not. the flute takes the most air out of all the instruments because we're the only instrument that blows across, like if you were to blow on um, like birthday candles or a soda pop bottle. Uh huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Very little air goes in. Most of your air goes across, and you lose most of your air. Oh. So we actually take the most air out of everything. And is this how a normal flute would look? Does every flute look the same? No. Um, not really. My flute is an open hole flute. It mm -hmm. has these open holes, which it usually is a more professional model. Uh huh. Most student flutes would go right to here to the C key. I okay. have one more key, which is a B key. Mm -hmm. My head joint was actually made by a man in London named Albert Cooper, and he makes some of the best sounding head joints in the world. Wow. So, and because this is so important up here, mm -hmm. I play mm -hmm. on an Albert Cooper head joint most of the time. Oh, he's got a name. He named it. It's his, it's, it's his, his, his head his, joint. It's head joint. Oh, got yeah. it, got it, yeah. got it, got it. Yeah. And is it old? Your flute? My flute is probably about 30 years old. I have a wood flute at home that's over 100 years old. Wow. Which is really but antique. Is, it, you, it becomes your fit though, right? I mean, eventually oh, yeah. it's, you yeah. couldn't pick up somebody else's and, and do the same thing. Yes. I actually, Julius Baker told me once, he said, if you are truly good, you can play on anything. And at that point, I have 
a student model flute, and he said, mm -hmm. give me your flute, mm -hmm. and he played on it, and the sound he got. Didn't sound like anything you would have <laughs> Right, you know, because I was, what was I, 13, 12 uh -huh. at that time, uh -huh. I went, wow. Uh -huh. He said, now you need to do the same thing on this flute, oh. you know. Okay. It, but yeah, there's a certain connection, though, mm -hmm. with your instrument. Oh, I'm sure. It's, you know, yeah. but I can play other flutes and hopefully make them sound good. And did you always want to do this? Actually, I started out as um, an Olympic hopeful. <laughs> um, I was very athletic, uh -huh. and I really thought I was going to be an athlete. Play in what sport? Um, I did swimming, and I what? did gymnastics. I also played field hockey, basketball, <laughs> volleyball. I did, did them all. But then when I got into high school, I got into Juilliard Prep. Okay. And, and that kind of drove the rest of the yeah, yeah. Yeah. But my mom will tell you, even from a young age, she probably should have known I was going to be a musician. Because anytime there was anything musical on TV, uh -huh. I would take my little chair, Aww. pull it right up in front of the TV, <laughs> and, and just be mesmerized by it. That's amazing. That's um, amazing. You know, so she said, I think I knew from when you were young you were going to be a musician. Yeah. It just took me a while to get there. And that's okay, because you got there. Right. I got there. Yeah. I got there. Well, I'm, we're going to take, a, in a minute, we're going to hear you play. Great. Um, I just want to remind everybody about all the things that are going on with you so that we don't miss out. Um, we have the Don't Stroke Chamber, Chamber Ensemble, which is coming up Labor Day weekend Labor, with that's our That's the Chamber big one Orchestra. in Labor Day weekend. Okay. We have Putnam Symphony that will be starting the first Wednesday in September. Mm -hmm. And that's our community orchestra. So if you're out there in the community saying, hey, I used to play, right. or I'm looking for a place to play, right. you know, please do contact us because we are always looking for musicians. Oh, that's terrific. And in the meantime, you have school starting. So you've school got to gear up next for that. Week. That's a whole <laughs> yeah. other mess. A whole other thing yeah. that I'm looking forward to. All your little people. How many students do you have a year? I have over 600 students a week. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I love them all. And love do you remember all. all their names? I will tell my students I'm very bad at remembering names uh -huh. and that they have to help me. Okay. And yeah. you know, usually by about November I get get them all down. That's but amazing. It takes me some time. That's amazing. Well, good luck with Thank everything. You. Good luck with your show in, on Labor Day and everything else. And I'm anxious to see some of the chamber music and hopefully some of the symphony music coming up in the fall. Great. And um, we're going to take a break for a minute. And, and I'd thank love you to for having me today. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'd love thank to you. hear you play. Um, Great. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to set you up and hear the beautiful instrument. Great, thank you. You're welcome.